Jeff Sluman now with the outright lead, 13 under. Mark O'Meara, Sandy Lyle, and Scott Simpson, 12 under. Greg Norman and Paul Azinger, 11 under. And let's go out to 11. Our leader, Sluman from about 90 yards. It's awfully difficult to throw it to that back tier. Sluman had seven top 10 finishes last year, but let's go ahead to 17. And there's the defending champion, John Mahaffey, failing to make his birdie here, but they have been very plentiful. There have been uh, 16 birdies already out of the 45 players through this once uh, terrifying hole. Bill Rogers uh, put the ball, his first ball in the water. That's the 25th uh, golf ball in the drink this year. And this is for a bogey four. That's a pretty good uh, second tee shot he played from the drop area to make that four a possibility. So Rogers is four under, Mahaffey in defense of his title, four under, and Hubert Green made a birdie here to go through at seven under par. And back to the 11th. With a group of Sandy Lyle, Jeff Sluman, and Paul Azinger making their way to the 11th green. Sluman away. As we were saying earlier, he has seven top 10 finishes last year. Finished 60th on the main list with winnings of $154,000. A surprise to some to see him in this position, though. Just for birdie. Playing awfully aggressive for a young man who's never won his best finish this year at the Hope. But you look at the players that have won here at the TPC, and they've not always been long. Of course, at 5'7 and 135 pounds, you know Jeff is not very strong. Calvin Pete with a tournament record of 14 under. Sluman one shot off that pace. Here's a young man who likes to compete. Azinger only two back. Just enough moisture on the greens that makes it difficult to get the ball to the hole. Paul with his first tournament win this year at Phoenix. Beat Hal Sutton by a shot. The TPC this year, a million dollar tournament. First prize, $180,000. Second place, $108,000. And third, $68,000 as we go to 12. There's Billy Glasson. Right dead in the middle of the fairway. You can see the pin kind of stuck on that slope over there. It's on the front right today. He's just got a sand wedge left, probably about 90 yards. He'll move to the right so he can see it. That pin is stuck down in a little, a little washed out area in the front right of the green. Bunker just to the right, about 8, 10 yards to the right of the green. And you can see that hill that's right in front of the pin. There's Greg Norman. Absolutely perfect position right there. There's a slope to the left of this pin, about 15 feet, that will run the ball right down into it. Kenny, you gonna do your thing with this all? I wanna see all that stuff. Well, what, what you do, uh, you come off of here, but you gotta go right there is where you wanna hit the ball. It gives you a perfect shot at the hole. Let's see if Greg Norman can do just as you said. Sand wedge, he'll probably take a little left of the hole, so the ball will feed back right off the slope. Take it way up in the air, as you can see him looking straight up. This should be very really solid. Just, just like Kenny did it. That's good. He can pick that one up. He's going to go to 12 under par. Gary, he made it look easier than I did. <laughs> he doesn't have a telescreen. That's right. Nicky Price with even a better angle. He's on the right side of the fairway. Look at this. You can see these greens are just absolutely perfect. The ball's not bouncing. Stopping right where they hit it. They're a little wet. And they're getting... There's not a whole lot of room left at the top of this 
leaderboard right now. We'll be back with more golf action from the Tournament Players Club after this word from your local station. Sluman, 13 under, leader by one. 211. Crenshaw, second shot, laying up short to the right. And he almost got close to that water to 12. Billy Glasson for his birdie. And he, he better get a new caddy or something if you read that flat. I don't know what he was thinking there. That's, uh, he only had about a 12-footer, and he kind of, uh, he's got about a 3-footer left, short right. Looks like one of the ones I hit. That was a pretty straight putt there. I don't know what Billy was, uh, Billy was doing. I guess you hit those along the way sometimes. Just clean this up, and it takes a lot less out of you if you miss it three feet short to the right on eight-footer than if you just go over the left edge of the hole. And it looks like it's got to go in, it doesn't. That hurts. That hurts. Now I'm going to think about this one for a second. He's going to let Nick putt out here. At this point of the game, a 10 under par, try not to do that a whole lot because you can uh, lose a lot of your wife's spending money at this particular point. Nick has got a pretty flat putt here. It's about, oh, let me guess. That's, this is the putt he should make. This is the putt these guys, are at this position, they're making a lot of these putts. 10, 12 footer. Probably break a little to his right. Greens are perfect speed. There's no spike marks on them. They're absolutely perfect. These guys, in the last couple of groups here, are rolling the ball really well. Hurry, hurry. Yes, hurry. No problem. Nicky was having a bad day. Went from 9 under to 5 under. Let's go back to 11. Scott Simpson from about 120 yards. Yeah. Well played. Simpson until today had only made three bogeys and three trips around the Players Club. His round today, of course, marred by that double bogey at the 7th. He remains 12 under and one back. To 12. Yes. That puts him to 12 under par. An absolute gimme unless uh, you're the broadcaster behind the 17th hole. I've seen him miss a few of those. Let's go back to 11. Crenshaw from just in the edge of the rough. Ben coming off that disastrous front nine of 41. Pick up that birdie at 10. One last week's tournament in New Orleans. Came here with a lot of confidence. Great attitude. Bit unlucky. I wonder if he's got the square grooves. And the final member of the threesome, Marco Mira, began his day at 14 under, has now dropped two shots. Awfully good golf swing. He's a perfect blend of talent and technique. There's where you don't want to be, where Sandy Lyle is perched. Well, I guess if you want to be over there, you got to hit it six feet. That's, that's left off the tee in those ghoulish mounds that kind of stand over there. That's the drive is to the right of those, about 20 yards, where you can look right at the flag stick. Sandy was up on the top of one of those, thank goodness, and he could get the club on it and get the ball in there six, eight feet away. And here goes my man, Slow. He's probably got 90 yards, sand wedge. Take a little left of the flag. Take a little right of the flag. Six feet straight up the hill. Very good chance. 
very good chance at a birdie right there to put him at 14 under par. This pin placement will take a beating today if you're in the fairway. Paul Azinger, better known as Zinger. He's got a sandwich. He'll play this real low. Hits the ball very low, spins the ball a bunch. This should really do some digging when it hits the green. Yeah! Oh, too much digging. That bet he had the same place that Nick Price did a second ago where he made that putt. Let's go to 13. On the 13th tee, this is Mark McCumber at 7 under par. He started the day at 8 under, 180 yards, par 3. What a lovely shot he's played, but he's way off the pace. Blazinger, pulled it, pulled it, pulled it, pulled it the whole way. That was to get Paul 12 under par. One shot back right now, the leader, but Jeff Sloan is hit in there about four or five feet right below the hole, straight up the hill. Very, very good chance at a birdie. And let's go to 11 while we're waiting. Elmira, to pull within one. Nope. Wasted opportunities at 10 and 11 as we go to 13. And Mark Cumber trying to make a birdie here. Yay! Doing so very well to get himself back to eight under par, which was uh, how he started. To 11. Simpson for birdie. Yay! And he moves into a tie for the lead at 13 under. Scott Simpson quietly hanging in there around the leaderboard. Won twice on our tour. Got a good foreign record. As Crenshaw makes his par. But at eight under remains five back of the lead now shared by Jeff Sluman and Scott Simpson. Norman, Lyle, and O'Meara one shot back. A lot of golf left to pay on, on this inward half. There you have it. Sluman and Simpson with that birdie at 11 move into a tie at 13 under. Greg Norman, Sandy Lyle, Mark O'Meara all at 12 under. Paul Azinger only two back at 11 under. And let's go to 12. Jeff Sluman straight up the hill. Pulled it, pulled it, the whole way. That's the first uh, non-aggressive stroke he's made. Steve Mellick was saying earlier he hasn't won on the tour. He won the 1985 Tallahassee Open, and it was a uh, TPS event. He is a very, very good player. He has no weaknesses. He just hasn't won yet, and it will be his turn shortly. Could be today. Let's go to 13. And Greg Norman. He's chosen a five iron for this 180 yard hole and that's going to come down from the top tier and give him a reasonably level putt for birdie, a very fine shot. So the battle has been joined with a vengeance on the inward half. Jeff Sluman and Scott Simpson tied for the lead but a host of pursuers. Sluman and Simpson tied for the lead 13 under, Norman and Lyle just behind to the 12th hole. Swing of Mark O'Meara. When he had that teed up, it looked like a three wood. Mark plays right to left. Start the ball down the right side. He's got it on the left-hand side of the fairway. Could be blocked out from the flag stick. Let's go to 13. 